On November the 15th, 2020, one of YouTube's most iconic, unique and ambitious projects was finally finished. Unus Anus, translated to one year in Latin, an idea of creating and posting to a YouTube channel daily but with planned obsolescence, deleting the channel in one year from its creation date and taking down all re-uploads, an anomaly against the algorithm, and a true test of YouTube's community guidelines, but an ambitious and symbolic venture that has attracted thousands to see what it's all about. But there is a genius business move behind this entire channel that has greatly contributed to its success. Couple that with a massive culture shock to the audience of YouTube, some really thought-provoking symbolism and a groundbreaking experimental style of content, and you have a true stroke of genius from Mark and Ethan. So where do we begin? Well, that's easy. 2016, of course. 2016 was debatably YouTube's best year, or at least the last year that YouTube was an enjoyable website. Jake Paul had thankfully not gathered for him, and the entire summer break was filled to the brim with drama and entertainment. But more importantly, this was the last year before demonetization, due partly to a news publication making an article on a certain Swede paying some Indian people to hold up a sign with some certain words on it, YouTube implemented the apocalypse in order to appeal to the majority of middle-aged white people. They punished those who didn't by taking away massive percentages of the money earned from videos that were deemed adult by the algorithm. The video Videos deemed to be demonetized include videos that topics such as sex, money, murder, wait no that's a gang. <laughs> videos depicting violence, sexual actions and harassment were likely to be demonetized, even if they were depicted as jokes or satirical content, and a lot of people were not happy. Hell, even I made a video complaining about demonetization when PewDiePie said the n-word back on my old channel that way again. We're going to talk, be talking about something uh, that has been going on on YouTube for just a small period of time, it's kind of died down now. Just move this then. Ah yes, the soothing voice of a 13 year old's commentary over four sounds in Battlefield 1. To this day, demonetization affects creators massively and without much clarification from YouTube, we are left guessing about what to do and what we should remove. The vagueness and constant clampdown of guidelines push us into a creative culture cage where we have to appeal to a certain denominator of people and if we decide to step outside of the cage, our hand is slapped and we are punished with a demonetization or god forbid an age restriction. And as YouTube has created its own content culture cage, so have the rabid audience of YouTube itself. To explain this, let's take a popular YouTuber like KSI as an example. In the early 2010s, KSI was usually making a wide range of videos. He didn't have to supply as much in terms of highly edited footage because of the expectations of YouTubers at that time. They were seen as geeky entertainers with webcams, not as celebrities with massive amounts of influence. And for someone like KSI, he could easily sit down and do a gaming video, a Q&A series, a vlog video or a reaction video in the early 2010s. Fast forward to 2017, when he went to live in the car house with Ricegum and it's clear that his videos around that time became more highly edited and hyperactive and that's because as the world advances people expect the norm from their favourite entertainers to be higher quality, there's a higher threshold for content. There are only a certain number of people who can survive without high tech flashy editing, people like Moist Critical and Mudaha who have built their core fan base upon their humorous, distinct and authentic personalities. But with people like KSI having an influx of fans due to his involvement in the music industry, he has had to find an editor and make more high energy and hyperactive videos. Not a lot set him apart from any other high energy gamer, so he had to start standing out when the standards got higher. He also isn't allowed to branch out to anything other than vlogs, apart from the Sidemen channel, which is generally more popular as it's a creative outlet not just for KSI, but for all of the Sidemen. YouTubers have been boxed into what they can make because of their dependency on making money and their incentive to get as many views as possible. This is why YouTube can sometimes look boring at times. Gaming channels always have to play the hottest new game in order to stay afloat. Commentary channels always have to talk about the hottest new drama in order to to stay afloat, and etc etc with all other communities. Unus Arnus completely steps out both of these cages by making a YouTube channel with an expiration date. This concept allows them to make the most of it by making interesting and fun content whilst not exactly abiding by the YouTube community guidelines. In fact, the first video that Unus Arnus ever uploaded was cooking with sex toys, and later they did videos making unholy water, exploring ghost houses, and painting each other nude. And this was during the lockdown as well, which limited some of their more extreme ideas. Through the idealist view, they have uploaded all this rule breaking content because the channel will eventually be deleted and thus breaking the rules isn't the end of the world for this channel. The channel has planned obsolescence and is essentially disposable. But idealistically, you could also see it as them doing as much as they want because they had a limited time. And the channel's meaning is about what you would do if you had a one year left to live, which is a brilliant fundamental to run a channel on. The freedom to make whatever you want to every day and putting so much effort into it because you have a limited time made some of YouTube's best content, which struck a chord with millions of people. And that leads me on to my next point. 
On this anus is a lot of symbolic significance. As I said before, the channel is about living life to the fullest and the fear of knowing your death. One of the popular quotes from the channel was memento mori, meaning remember you must die in Latin. The channel symbolism seems to represent death and mortality, knowing that as you've been created, you are not going to live forever. Everything will die eventually, but if you knew when it was going to happen, what would you do before your death day? On the first video of the channel, Markiplier is dressed in a white suit. The colour white represents being born, but could also allude to the white wings of angels and the blinding visions of heaven, representing a polarising image. Ethan is dressed in a black coloured suit, as the colour black is usually associated with withering, death and funerals, which is a meaningful statement to life, with the two polar opposites standing next to each other. Every second we are all temporary and we are all withering. No one can live forever, and so there is that fear of the dark and the unknown. Also, many religions believe that there is an afterlife, a sort of heaven, or or hell or a rebirth, but what if death was just infinite nothing forever with no one or nothing to interact with? This idea actually sparked my mind because of how he's explored in Tortured, which is one of my favourite TV shows, but it is also represented by the Unus Arnus channel. There is no afterlife for Unus Arnus, all the reuploads have been taken down. Searching for the channel today will bring up nothing but a legacy, there is no future for Unus Arnus. It is all null and void, there is nothing left and this is a really interesting message that is explored. Among all the goofy things that uploaded onto Unus Arnus, you'd think people would just treat this just the channel when it was getting deleted. However, the loss for Unus Arnus is treated as losing a loved one, as people mourn and grief and eventually accept. Why else do you think 1 million people tuned in to a 12 hour livestream as Markiplier and Ethan looked at all the Unus Arnus fan art stuff, trying and eventually succeeding by accepting their fate? It's interesting to see how Mark and Ethan have to take on the responsibility of destroying something they've worked so hard on, essentially having to bear the brunt or playing gods in this final stream. They could have just let it live on, but they had to decide and they made their choice. Mark and Ethan decided to kill their channel and it is genuinely saddening to see a con channel's content being wiped, like the death of an actual person. It may shock you to realise that I have actually never watched an Unus Arnus video. I'm not here as an avid viewer, but as a bystander and an analyst, who is simply here to pay my respect to such a meaningful project. And thus, I will also talk about the genius of Unus Arnus. My analysis is not restricted to symbolism, but also business. Now, unfortunately, there will most likely not be another Unus Arnus. There will be no Unus Arnus 2, because Mark and Ethan are taking our reuploads to preserve the status and authenticity of Unus Arnus as a story that will be passed down through the generations. They won't be able to delete every reupload upload because of the number of people, but they are trying their best and a majority of the fanbase are doing their part by not uploading. Creating a second Unus Arnus would overshadow the first one and the first one's success because more people would know. And this is where exclusivity and the FOMO come in. The magic of Unus Arnus runs on exclusivity and FOMO, which is a business term for fear of missing out. FOMO is the idea of creating something that is special but limited to increase purchases because customers will fear missing out on a flashy and exclusive product, so they will buy it. If you've heard about Super Mario All-Stars, that's one of the examples of FOMO in action. This marketing scheme is used cleverly by Mark and Ethan by making the channels run time limited and special instead of their products such as merchandise. This draws in more people because they might regret not watching the channel later and this creates a massive devoted core fanbase who eagerly await for Unisanus to return, just like a fan of Gucci waiting for their next release. If you don't know what a core fanbase is, it is the number of people who frequently keep up with what you're doing. Having more of them will mean that they are more likely to watch all your videos click on all your sponsors and buy all your merch. Ethan and Mark might say they're deleting the re-uploads to keep the authenticity, but it could also be to create exclusivity. Deleting the re-uploads creates a sort of community or barrier of exclusivity, a core fanbase of people who can say, yes, I watched an Unus Arnus video. And this is represented by the commemorative hashtag used for Unus Arnus on Twitter, hashtag we were here. As humans, we strive for climbing the ladder, being different and unique and holding coveted titles compared to others. That's just our natural instinct and wishes, and Mark and Ethan and cleverly satisfy this need to create a larger fan base and get things such as more sales in their merchandise. So Toastify, why don't they just make Unus Arnus 2 and get more viewers? And to that I'd say, it's just like printing off money. If you just start printing more loads of money, then you're not going to get more money, it's just that the value of the money is going to go down. If more people have the coveted title of watching Unus Arnus, the role will become less valuable and thus the people will become less invested in the channel. Because it will become the norm, people will be like, oh I watch Unus Arnus all the time, it's not going to be something exclusive saying, oh I watch Unus Arnus. I was there, I watched those videos. I do agree that they will get more viewers and thus more money, but they will never get this core fanbase lasting for years waiting for the next thing. And coupled with the people who have missed out on Unus Arnus looking to get to the party, this makes the interest even bigger. And that boys and girls is the art of exclusivity. Oh by the way, I don't even study business.
In conclusion, Unus Anus is a legendary project that means a lot more to people than you may think. The fact that the creators stuck to their word and leased the channel with around 5 million subscribers, which average millions of views every video, is absolutely insane. We know that both these creators were already famous, but this project made them even more revered. This is honestly really fun and interesting to look into and I love making this video. I'll be putting a lot more work into these documentary style videos when I can. Uh, if you made it to the end, thank you for watching. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you want to see more content. Until next time, stay toasty. Fuck me! Ha! 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 Shit! Going solo. What the fuck?